Hey, welcome. Thank you for coming to listen to the Lichen Sclerosis Podcast. My name is Kathy, and I'm an LS sister who, after seven years of being misdiagnosed, getting no real answers, and finding a lack of information, decided to start this podcast. Each week, I research or talk to someone about an aspect of lichen sclerosis and bring you the information so you don't have to go searching. I bring you straight talk without the medical jargon. This week, we're going to discuss the itch, why it mostly happens when we're, you know, laying down. And I'm going to tell you seven different ways ladies go about getting some relief. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to ask for your help. I need you to send me your diagnosis story. You can submit it in writing or you can send me a recording off of your phone. I want to put them together in a special compilation episode. So you can DM me at Lichen Sclerosis Podcast on Instagram. You can message me at Lichen Sclerosis Support Network on Facebook. Or you can email Kathy with a K at Lichen Sclerosis Podcast.com. I'll have all of those links in the show notes. So no worries. Secondly, I want to remind you, if you want to get together virtually, of course, with some lichen sclerosis sisters from all over the world, don't forget to go to lichensclerosispodcast.com slash connect and sign up for the lichen sclerosis virtual meetup newsletter so that you can stay up to date on all the information and get notified when we have our first meetup. Also, I'll be asking questions and stuff like that so you can help me to make decisions on how we're going to do it, when we're going to do it. And trust me, I need your input. Go sign up now, lichensclerosispodcast.com slash connect. So the itch. Yes, it deserves its own name. It is a noun, not a verb. It deserves that level of respect because That bitch is real. So from now on, I dub the itch Persistent Patty. That's the itch's name, Persistent Patty. (laughs) And like I've said before, itch is my most common symptom. It's my most persistent symptom. It's the reason that I first started going to the doctor to try to find out what was going on because I was consistently and constantly itching. I decided to do this episode because it's such a big factor in my lichen sclerosis that I wanted to find out more information about it. So the most interesting thing I found out is not everybody has the itch. There are some ladies who don't itch at all, some who have minor itch, and some who have inconsistent itch. Once again, going to prove that lichen sclerosis affects each of us differently. Even if you don't have the itch, you can learn a lot from this episode. So let's see if you have the itch. We're going to play a game that I've seen on TikTok called Put a Finger Down. We're going to do Itchy Vulva Edition. Okay, put all of the fingers on both of your hands up. All right, here we go. (laughs) Put a finger down if you have or have ever had a stack of holy panties in your drawer. And I'm not talking about blessed underwear. Put a finger down if you've woken up in the dead of sleep because your vulva was screaming to be scratched. Put a finger down if you've woken up with blood under your nails and your vulva looks like Freddy Krueger got into your dreams. And if you're too young to know who Freddy Krueger is, he's a guy who gets into your dreams and whatever he does in your dreams happens to you in real life. Look up Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, put a finger down if you've lost sleep because your vulva felt like it was being attacked by red ants. (laughs) Put a finger down if you've been unable to sit through class or through a movie comfortably because you didn't want the people around you see you scratch. (laughs) 
put a finger down if you've gone commando in hopes that your Volvo will calm down. Put a finger down if you've ever had to run to the bathroom just to scratch your vulva. Put a finger down if you've ever debated over having sex because you know that once it's over, your vulva is going to be itching. (laughs) And put a finger down if just showering has led to you scratching your vulva. All right, now, if you have five or less fingers up, you have the itch. So <laughs> so this is definitely the episode for you. Now, I know I have the itch. My underwear have told all my secrets. If Victoria saw them, she would be highly disappointed. Do you keep your holy underwear or do you throw them away as soon as they get holy and just buy new ones? Personally, I have a stack on the one side that are holy and then a stack on the other side, which are not. And I keep the holy ones for those times when I know I'm in a flare because I don't want to mess up my nice new ones. God knows. At one point, I had no, none, zero underwear without holes in them. And that was just sad. (laughs) My husband paid a lot of money to Victoria's Secret for them underwear. He don't buy me underwear no more. (laughs) So anyway, seriously, seriously, getting back to serious talk. The itch. Persistent Patty. Ladies have described her as ants biting, insects crawling on your vulva, anguish, and so severe that it disrupts their sleep. It's that bad. I get two reoccurring questions when it comes to the itch. Why does it happen mostly at night? And when they say at night, I'm going to preface it as when you're laying down or relaxing because I work nights. So that means I sleep during the day and persistent Patty comes to visit me even during the day when I'm laying down to go to sleep. So it's not just at night. It's when you're laying down and relaxing. And the other question I get a lot is, how do I stop the itch? So we're going to talk about those two things. I did a lot of research. And let me tell you, I could barely find anything on why our itching manifests mostly when we're laying down relaxing. I did find one article on healthline.com. And according to the article, itching, quote, might seem more pronounced at night because there are fewer distractions. This makes you hyper aware of the itching, end quote, which completely makes sense because when we're going through our day, we're doing stuff where our mind is focused on other things. And so when we're laying down to go to sleep or relax, now we're, if you're lucky, not having a lot of thoughts running through your head and, you know, you're winding down. So that could be it. We discussed this in the Lichen Sclerosis Support Network. And one of the ladies said, quote, as it was explained to me, because I'm one of those whose only symptom was itching, is when we lay down, be it for sleeping or resting, we are creating a warm, moist environment around our genitalia. We may sleep with our legs together, wear pajamas or a nightgown under blankets and quilts. That is a prime environment for anything to do with itching, end quote. So it could be environmental or it could be that our thoughts are turned off. And so we become hyper aware to everything that's going on in our body. I know personally, I would love for the itch to just go away. And when I'm not in a flare, of course, I don't have the itch. But I did read multiple times. Some ladies have been able to stop the itch by not scratching. Like they've done things so that they do not scratch or they've mentally just said, "Okay, I'm not going to scratch no matter what. I'm not going to scratch. I'm not going to scratch. And they said that over time, the itch went away, which is pretty remarkable But can I tell you a secret? I wish I could do that. But sometimes, 
when I first scratch that itch, it feels so damn good. I mean, whoo, and am I a weirdo for that? Please tell me that I'm not the only one that gets a really good feeling from scratching. Now, mind you, that only lasts about five, 10 seconds because after that, it starts burning like hell. And then I'm like, okay, stop. But those first seconds of me scratching and that just feels so good. (laughs) I'm just saying. All right. All right. Seriously, though. We're going to talk about seven ways that ladies stop or at least postpone their itch. Number one, use your steroid medication. That's what I do. Once I put clobetasol on, I'm good. The itch goes away, thankfully. I know a lot of you either can't use clobetasol because you're allergic or it doesn't work for you. But if you're lucky enough that it does work for you, that's my go-to. Just put some ointment on there and I'm good to go. Number two, soaking in Epsom salt. I saw a lot of women who said soaking in Epsom salt in a tub relieves the itch for them. So they take a bath in Epsom salt before they go to bed at night, which is probably good for your body all over aches and stuff. Number three, apply moisturizers. Now there is a long list of moisturizers that you can use. It's really trial and error what works for you. Just like LS, treatments are different for everybody. So what can work for one does not work for the other and vice versa. So the most popular ones that I noticed were emu oil, which looks like it's more on the expensive side. But a lot of women say they get great results from it. On the least expensive side, there's castor oil, coconut oil, and raw shea butter. And it varies on application. Some ladies use it, you know, just after their bath. Some use it every time they use the bathroom. They reapply. So you got to play with it. See what works for you. And... You know, again, trial and error. Number four, changing their diets. A lot of women have seen results from cutting out sugar, cutting out gluten, dairy, or going on a low carb or a low oxalate diet. Some ladies have done all of this. They've cut everything out and they've seen results. So play around, see what works for you. Number five, using soaps that contain anti-itching or anti-fungal properties. I saw one specific soap that was coconut oil based and the lady really raved about it. But do your research, find out what works for you because In that same post, there were some ladies who said that it irritated them or burnt them. So you got to find what works for you. That's the theme through this whole episode. All of us are different and each one of our bodies is going to react differently. Number six, reduce stress. I cannot tell you how important it is. Stress is a major trigger for our flares. And of course, if you have the itch, when you flare, you gonna pay for it with a scratch. (laughs) So practice mindfulness, get some better sleep, exercising or doing yoga. All of these things are gonna help reduce your stress and it's gonna help to not trigger these flares and for the flares not to last as long. And number seven, going commando. Now, this has helped me as well. When I'm laying down and I don't feel like getting up because I'm tired and I'm feeling lazy, I just slip off my underwear and let the air flow. (laughs) 
<laughs> and that seems to calm Patty down. She she likes to just get some air sometimes, and then she shut her down. The lady from my group, she shared what helps her. She says, quote, apply the topical steroid one hour before bedtime, apply a barrier cream mixed half and half with over-the-counter lidocaine, go commando if possible, or very loose fitting sleepwear. And she says, it does help. I'm very fond of men's boxer shorts, about three times too large and a sleeveless tunic. Of course, I also wander around the backyard in that type of clothing. So, end quote. So she has found what helps her. Mix and match, experiment, and find what helps you. Number eight, as a bonus, if all else fails, use some lidocaine in an emergency to numb the vulva. There's a product called ReactiCare that was recommended to one of the ladies by a doctor and it's over the counter and it has the maximum strength lidocaine. So there you have it. Eight ways to quiet Patty down. (laughs) Number one, use your medication. Number two, soak in Epsom salt. Number three, apply moisturizers. Number four, change your diet. Number five, use soaps with anti-itching or anti-fungal properties. Number six, reduce your stress. Number seven, go commando. And number eight, your bonus, use lidocaine to numb your vulva. How do you get itch relief? Do you ever get pleasure from scratching or am I the only weirdo out here? Let me know your thoughts. Give me your tips. You can DM me on Instagram at Lichen Sclerosis Podcast. Message me on Facebook at Lichen Sclerosis Support Network or email me at Kathy with a K at Lichen Sclerosis Podcast.com. If you know of an LS sister who can use this information, or you're in a support group and you think this would be helpful, please share this episode because you never know. A lot of us struggle silently before we speak up. Don't forget to send me your diagnosis story and sign up to join the Lichen Sclerosis Podcast virtual meetup. All the links will be in the show notes. And I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you next time. Bye. Loss of sleep. I've lost a plenty of sleep because the itching, I don't know why, but it just manifests just as I'm laying down, ready to go to sleep. My vulva just wants to start itching. It's like, hey, it's time to party. And I'm like, no, it's time to go to sleep. But she ain't listening. (laughs) So I got a scratch. Yeah. And then I don't go to sleep right away.